There were a bunch of really weird, really fun, really interesting cars at Fully Charged in San Diego last month uh, when I went there as a, as a guest. It was um, a great event and we had a lot of fun, but why don't we just talk about the vehicles? I'm Brian. Uh, welcome to my Tesla weekend. So why don't we start out with the canoe? Canoe? Did you know they're still in business? I did not. And apparently, neither did they. Because while this prototype was on display, it was only there, like, as a guest. Not as a featured thing, not as a booth, not as a actual... I mean, it is beautiful. If they're still in business, I would really like to see them succeed because it's an awfully cool vehicle. It's got seats that fold down in weird configurations. It's great in so many ways. All it needs is a skateboard that works and away you go. Then there was the Fisker Ocean. And as much as I tried to interview someone, anyone about it. Yeah, they weren't interested in that. Um, these were just low-level PR people. Um, the decision makers, the people I would actually need to talk to, they were not there. Uh, and upon request, they were still not there. So Fisker has a long reputation as a not very good company. This is a beautiful, brilliant prototype. All the windows roll down all the way. Great. Who cares? Does it work? Can you scale it to production? And the answer is, and I have this on good authority, maybe? <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, man. It's gorgeous. So I'll just let it roll a bit so you can see a little bit more of what Fisker looks like. <laughs> Elsewhere in the display space, there was a, a lot of great stuff. There was a car club who makes EVs and a college that makes EVs. Anyone who makes EVs was invited to come in. I don't know what the fee was. It must have been reasonable because a lot of them were there and they had some really, really cool stuff. You can see it on the screen. A lot of cars that were built as ice cars, as internal combustion, have been converted to electric vehicles. Kind of fun. Kind of cool. Hopefully they work. So that's kind of that. I'll let this roll for a minute and then we'll get on toward the conclusion. So before I get to the big finale, and I promise you there's a little bit of after bonus coming, um, I wanted to give a big thanks, a big shout out to my Patreons who get early access bonus content, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, at the $10 level and above, they get access to my 11 year production prediction tracker. And it's looking pretty consistent, if I do say so myself. So here you are. Here we go. This is it. It's time. The bonus. I got to meet Joe Answers. I'm sorry. Mr. Scott Answers. No, I'm sorry. Scott Joe with the a Answers with Joe Scott. Oh, my gosh. I know this may sound silly, but I watch a lot of YouTube. And this guy has made so many <laughs> videos that are so clever. And I love him. And meeting him in person was a real, real treat. He's, he's a normal guy. He's as funny as he seems on his channel. And he was just great to hang out with. Um, I got to meet him briefly at the show. And then I got to meet him in a much longer format um, that evening at the uh, special YouTuber dinner that the fully charged folks put on um, to uh, help out uh, folks like us uh, get to meet each other. So that was it. That was great. I loved it. 
Joe, thank you for meeting with me. We had fun. Well, <laughs> I had fun. You had to look at my ugly mug, you poor bastard. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your comments, and all your juicy, blind, and brilliance in them comments below. And stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop. So here is your time and a half overtime bonus. Thanks for hanging out. Roger says, batteries will run out of materials. PG&E isn't going to build a grid for other manufacturers. So in theory, if he isn't sued for monopoly on the charging, but Rivian's going to be getting in the new Amazon fleet, that's a lot of driver miles. Only way Tesla is showing miles driven is giving cars to Uber drivers. They drive a thousand miles a week easily. So there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, batteries will run out of materials. No, they won't. There's a lot, a lot of battery supplies. Lithium is not in short supply. Nickel kind of is not in short supply. It's a little expensive right now. Cobalt, we're moving away from that. Over half the cars Tesla builds don't even use cobalt. So batteries will run out. Of, and then, of course, you've got new chemistries, sodium. Uh, silicon-juiced anodes. A lot of stuff that is reducing dependence on more difficult chemi uh, chemistries. PG&E isn't going to build a whole grid for other manufacturers. Nope, that's true. That is correct. But they don't need to? Um, no, the grid exists. PG&E already buys from a wide variety of very large and very small providers, including individuals with power walls. No, they don't need a whole grid. This is supplemental to that. This is finding a new hydro dam, except it's batteries, or cars, or power walls, or something like that. If he's not sued for monopoly on the charging. Well, I mean, there's a bunch of charging companies, and you can charge at home. I don't think uh, it's very easy to sue someone for a monopoly if you're also allowed to do the thing at your own house. But Rivian is going to be the new Amazon fleet. I hope so. I hope they will. Uh, the truck seems good. The Bright Drop truck from GM seems good. The Sprinter van from Ford seems good. I hope all of those win. The only way Tesla is showing miles driven is giving cars to Uber drivers. Well, I'm sure they'd like that. Uh, but I don't see that happening. Chris says, every new model introduced by a manufacturer means engineering millions. List to a large design team with their endless sketches, clay models, renders, prototypes. After that comes the additional cost for different parts and maintaining stock of those parts. And when sales don't pick up by itself, they just spend millions in advertising to persuade consumers the new model is perfect for them. Compared to Tesla, who designed one category killer, keep perfecting it while it's on the market, all new parts will still retrofit current cars, and Tesla doesn't even need advertising to sell them. Tesla spends money wisely and thus achieves better margins. So yeah, this is in response to an R&D complaint. Ah uh, yeah, Tesla does not spend enough on R&D. Look at how pathetic their R&D spend is. Guys, R&D research that includes market research that includes all the sketches that the legacy guys show to panel after panel of soccer moms and soccer dads and who knows who that's all research that's millions of dollars that doesn't actually go into the core that's how you got the homer do you really need to develop all the stamps and dies and all that for 30 cores when what you really need is one really good car. So the R&D spend is not too low. They get maximum bang for the buck. They don't, they don't have to stockpile a kajillion parts. Just a handful, you know, because the cars are all kind of the same. And there's a lot of overlap in the parts. And of course, the best part is no part. So that, I think, is pretty valuable. Thank you for the comment, Chris.